everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Welcome Live. Welcome back to day two. This is part two of a two-part series. Thanks for joining us. Again, my name is Gus Martin, and I'm joined by the wonderful and talented Julia. This is your third time? Yeah, third time. Well, technically fourth now, because you were live yesterday. Yeah. With us. And in a moment, Julia will let you know all about what she's going to be working on today. It's going to be graphic design, branding, mock-ups, and we're even going to play with some dimension. But um, really quickly, we want to say hi to everyone that's joining us in chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We have Jack in chat, a good friend of ours, Kroll, Diffix, Ariana's here, Jofian. Wait, did I say that wrong yesterday? I think I might have. Which one? Jofian. Or, well, there was one you helped me pronounce yesterday. Oh. Maybe it wasn't that one. I think it was a different one. Sorry if I'm I think it was, mispronouncing. Uh, Yevgenia. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yevgenia. Yevgenia from Russia. Yeah. I messed that up. Welcome, everyone. Aurelia? So good to see you here. Thanks for joining. We've got Tim in chat, our good friend, Yale. DeAndre, Paulina from Chicago, Evan, uh, Everardo. Everardo? <laughs> nice. Marissa? Cool. Lucy? Thanks for joining and uh, keep letting us know where you're from. Uh, really quickly, I want to do some housekeeping, let you know how you can engage with us while we're live. Uh, let's take a look at the schedule. We were live all day today. Uh, this morning, we kicked things off with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. That's being hosted by Kathleen Martin. Uh, right after that, we had a photo retouching live stream with Peter Samuels, uh, followed by a live stream with Howard Pinsky that just ended with the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And finally, and I'm a little bit biased, but the best stream of the day, we've got logo <laughs> design. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, if you stick around for the next 30 minutes, all you have to do is stay active in chat on Behance. You'll have the chance to win 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. And then one extra thing, if you feel like working on the Daily Creative Challenge, you can check out information on the tab right above chat that says challenge. Um, if you read that and you participate and you share some work on Discord, we'll be reviewing that work in an hour and a half. So you'll have a chance to have your work shown on the live stream and we'll give you some feedback. So yeah. Stick around for that. And without further ado, Julia, let's let them know a little bit about you and yourself. Feel free to introduce yourself and then we'll talk okay. about what you're working on today. All right, cool. Um, yeah, hi to everyone in the chat. Vika from Russia. Uh, I'm from Ukraine, so um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, welcome. It's good to have you here. And um, well, so my name is Julia Masalska. I'm a graphic designer based in Denver, Colorado. And Paco, I've got her portfolio pulled up if you want to show my screen. Yeah, Perfect. so um, I'm mostly working on branding, packaging, and editorial design. As you can see, I've uh, had a bunch of uh, packaging projects recently that yes. you feel free uh, to check out. And uh, these are, um, yeah, this is a very fun packaging project cool. that I've I love had these recently. Colors. Yeah. It reminds me a little of the color palette we're playing with today, too. Yeah. Not exactly, but yeah. similar. Yeah, and the, my recent project, uh, here you can see renderings and dimension that we're going to be working with today as well. So I'm going to be showing you how to make cool render renderings with uh, using nice lights. You know, and we're going to apply it to the brand that we've been creating yesterday yes. for a flower shop. So it's going to be super exciting. We yeah. have uh, uh, started off uh, very, uh, very funny, actually. Uh, <laughs> we might even play a game later with Dimension, too, because you see how realistic these look? Yeah, it's that's amazing. True. And we yeah. might ask you, is it real or did we make it in Dimension? <laughs> so stick around yeah. for that. Yeah, cool. Sorry, if ahead. we want to switch to my screen, I'm going to show you real quick how, uh, how we started off. As you can see, um, this looks very terrible, very terrible. <laughs> but this was the <laughs> experimental part of the whole thing. This was just a start. From there, we went and we went ahead and picked this shape, continued working on it, and that's how we got to this shape, right? And from there, we went ahead and used the shape in our brand combined with this very wonderful uh, serif type. Mm -hmm. And later on, we, we translated this um, uh, logo and um, our wonderful shape here into these graphics that we're going to be using for our brand in our mockups. Yes, I can't wait to see that. So then we introduced the whole thing into our color palette. Mm -hmm. And this is what came out in the end. I actually really like the combination. And I was very surprised how well it actually came off. Um, and you know, I was thinking about these uh, little lines here. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of when you package flowers, you have this, um, this paper that you wrap around. And when you hold it, 
Yeah. It kind of creates the shape, you know, the shape of your crinkling. hand. Yeah, oh, and it kind I of looks like like you squeeze something together. Mm -hmm. I like that. So that could be something that you can introduce uh, in, yeah, introduce into the brand as well. All right, and then we went ahead uh, and built different variations, mm -hmm. and I went ahead and built some uh, basic graphics that we can use for our mockups. Cool. Here you can see. Um, a card that I've made for uh, like a flyer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just for the sake of creating mockups later on in Photoshop. Cool. Did you play around with any new typefaces for these? Yeah, sets? so actually I combined the typeface that we picked yesterday uh -huh. with this typeface. Uh, it's called it's called Acumen Pro. Cool. And here it's a very uh, simple sans serif typeface and I thought it works super well with our serif and playful uh, typeface. Yep. So um, yeah, for our collateral, I picked this one, and it has a lot of variety to it. So it has um, it has different uh, width um, settings. Here we have also italic, and cool. you know. So I thought this was a good typeface to combine it yeah, with. Yeah, I love it. Very so cool. should we jump into Photoshop? We right should. Away? We should do some mockups. Um, we mentioned this yesterday, but Julie actually took her own photos for these yeah. mockups. So she's going to show you all about that. Um, exactly. So this was actually my first time taking photos for mockups, but I can tell you it's very easy, and um, I can show you a little preview of what you can achieve with that on this example here. So you can see this is a very simple photo with a little shadow of flowers that I uh, took. Um, and it's just taking from my desk, really, from my white desk. Mm -hmm. I just uh, cut out some papers um, that I got at Michael's. You can see there is this uh, paper that's a little trans half transparent here. And um, I've been trying to stick almost to the brand colors that we picked. But of course, in advance, I was not sure which colors those will be. But I will show you how to adjust the color to the exact brand colors. Awesome. So I went ahead here and I adjusted the brightness. Cool. So my picture was a little bit too dark, so I adjusted the brightness here. Then um, what I did here is I adjusted the color of this card to our brand color that we have cool. here. So you can see this, um, this red. So what I did was I took this um, hex code and I copy pasted it into the Photoshop and I've, um, I've used this exact color over here and created a mask where I cut out this piece mm -hmm. and colored only the, the piece that I needed to color. Okay, then cool. now I have almost the brand colors that we have. Um, then I went ahead and, and took the design that we had from yesterday, the logo, and combined it with some text right here. Mm -hmm. Very simple, just a name and the phone number and the little logo that we created yesterday. And I put it on top of this card. It's very easy. You just copy paste it and then um, and then it will appear like this. You just wow. adjust the... That seems too easy. And uh, this is the... <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and this is the card that I have created here. Right? Awesome. It's all very easy to assemble just because we already have those assets. Mm -hmm. We have the logo, we have the different ways to use our logo. So here you can see it, it's kind of uh, repeating itself. Um, you have the brand element here at the top and you have the whole logo at the bottom. And you have very little information, but still it already has this brand you know, appeal and um, it already has this, uh, it belongs to this brand. So, um, Brand guidelines. Yeah, and it's so easy to just copy paste it on top of the uh, of the card. Yeah, totally. And I did the same thing here, just to see how you know black and white would look in different type of types of print. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, have, we have a lot of people in chat. I want to give a quick shout out to all, yeah, all sure. these folks that are saying hi. We've got Kira, Aurelia, Bojana's here, Stephanie. 
Uh, we had William saying hi earlier. We've got some friends, Dave and Esther and Jack are tuning in from my home state, Ohio. Yay. So thanks awesome. for joining. I'm from Columbus, so that's super cool. Hugo's in here, Ahmed, Anton, Sophia, Grand Freud's here, um, someone we love to see in chat. It's been a while since I've seen you, Steve. Um, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, Continue thanks. to say hi and introduce yourself. We're yeah. really happy you're here. Yeah, I can see people are asking where my accent is coming from. Yeah. So I think my accent is a big mix of different things. So <laughs> I was born in the Ukraine. When I was nine years old, we moved to Germany and 18 years of my life I spent in Germany. So probably my accent is a mix of German, Russian, you know. It's just you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely very mixed up. <laughs> but cool. yeah. Um, uh, Natalie says hi. We've got Ignacio from Milwaukee. Yay. Jordan is in the chat. Good to see you again, Jordan. Martin, it's a good name, <laughs> is in the chat. Dave, Wendy, Joey, and Vika, thanks for joining us. Yay, cool. And we'll continue working, but I just wanted to say thanks everyone for, for tuning in and saying hi. Yeah, cool. So um, we have a couple mock-ups that are that I have taken pictures of. I would like to go through with you to just, uh, you know, to un make you understand how, what kind of work process, workflow it is to work on a mock-up like this until it uh, has a final result like, like here. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, the basic things are adjusting the lighting, mm -hmm. adjusting the color brightness. So here, for example, I have used the, um, uh, the dodge tool to brighten up the edges a little bit, right? Cool. So um, we can go ahead and do the same thing on an example that I have here. As you can see, this is just a simple picture and I have not done any edits to it yet. So what it I would do- It looks pretty good. <laughs> I, I was mean, trying, I was trying my eye. best. The light <laughs> was just so good this day. And yeah. you know, Denver is one of the uh, cities with the most uh, sunlight in during the year. So I think we have about, 330 sunny days. That's what they Just say. Just another sunny girl <laughs> makes sense now. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I moved there. Yeah, that's cool. Um, just so you know, that's her That's her Instagram handle. So. Just another sunny girl. Just yeah, follow me. <laughs> okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do here is, first of all, I'm, I wanna go in, in, into detail a little bit and go and do some retouching right here. You can see those little, um, you know, things that are, you know, you don't want to look at them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and create a copy of the of the background of the picture. Cool. And that's uh, um, uh, command and J. It's just a copy and I'm going to call it blemishes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the stamp tool. Do you always name your layers? No, or are you not just always. doing that because we're I, trying to show since them the right I, way? Since I've been working <laughs> with uh, bigger brands, mm -hmm. um, I started doing that just because I have so much respect and if, if a person looks at my file, I don't want it to be embarrassing for me. So I think that's the only reason. Oh, that's and, a great point. But also, but also if you have so many layers, if you're working on some artwork, for example, mm -hmm. it really makes sense to name your layers. Yeah, I agree. I think in general, designers are notorious for not naming layers. Yeah, I'm that's true. I'm curious to see if people in chat do the same thing. Yeah. Do you name? Do you not name? What's your strategy? Yeah, let us know. So okay. here I'm working cool. uh, with a stamp tool. Mm -hmm. I usually pick a size that's just just a, a little bit bigger than uh, my little blemishes. So um, here I just press Alt, the Alt key and click to, pick, uh, to take my sample and I click and the sample is getting transferred to this other spot. It's too easy. And that's why, um, that's how it, basically I work through my <laughs> whole, my whole artwork here, you know, to cover those spots. Uh, yeah. Cool. We have some right here. Yeah, and uh, nice. same thing I do when I work for big clients. Mm -hmm. I start off with the blemishes. Um, remove all the things that you don't want to see in the picture. And you've been doing some retouching for clients recently, right? Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm working with an agency as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. 
which is actually pretty fun because I get to work with like clients like Panda Express and, and Jameson. And uh, they would send me pictures and I would work from my home in my pajamas. <laughs> the best kind of job. And, and, and the cool <laughs> thing is, uh, recently when Adobe Max was, uh, was on in uh, November, right? Mm -hmm. Beginning yep. of November. Uh, so we all went to to LA, and LA and Vegas are the were the cities where those billboards were supposed to be published from Pen Express. <laughs> and I got to take. I was driving. I was literally driving, and I see this billboard, and I'm like, "Wow, I know this picture." <laughs> <laughs> You've seen it a million times. I've seen it for so many hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so um, it's fun. It was it. It was massive too. Probably it was a huge, a you huge billboard. You could see your own yeah. handiwork on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's really fun. cool. So even though you're a graphic designer and an illustrator, you also have an extra skill retouching and that can be turned into a whole extra side business. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Cool. Yeah, it's fun. I actually, um, of course you have to pick the layer when you, wanna, when you wanna use the stamp tool because if you haven't picked anything, your, uh, your Photoshop doesn't know where you wanna sample uh, from. Right. So. That's something you really have to make sure. Camila's wondering how to get work as a freelance designer. She wants to quit her job and she needs advice. <laughs> oh, I would wait before I quit my job <clears throat> because uh, freelance work, freelance work starts uh, with little, little um, mm. jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's probably not the way you want to start off because, <clears throat> excuse me. That makes a lot of sense. Because uh, you might get in trouble financially. Right, so kind of ease into it. Like yesterday you had mentioned how you got started was actually working for your mom and yeah. then some of your mom's friends and it was kind of word of mouth and it grew. Exactly. And as you got more work, you then ended up building your portfolio. Correct. And the momentum carried itself on. But Correct. it wasn't as if you just bloomed into a fully fledged yeah. design agency overnight. Exactly. So it doesn't <laughs> happen overnight. You need to build your client clientele. You need to build out your online presence and it all takes time. So before you quit your job, I would maybe consider <laughs> working on your portfolio first and then um, and then kind of like slowly, slowly jump into it um, when as soon as you notice that um, mm -hmm. that you have enough clients to be sufficient in your financial situation. That's a really good, really good advice. I love how you're painting shadows right now. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want it to look too, you know. Yeah. It looks organic now rather than, you know, yeah. a sharp edge where it's been chopped. Yeah. So now I think it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I might want to go ahead and make a little adjustment to the brightness, brightness and the contrast. Cool. Increase your conscious just a little bit. Slightly, slight changes are always um, the best thing to go to go for. Like I would not, you know, mm -hmm. um, move it too much. Are each of these adjustment layers that you're creating? Hmm? The, like I guess, to keep it really, really simple. Like, are these extra layers that you've added on top to adjust the brightness and uh, the saturation? You don't really have to add, uh, add a layer, mm -hmm. but it automatically does when you click on. Uh, brightness contrast adjustment, right. it automatically adds a new layer for that. So, cool. yeah, and we're gonna go to hue and saturation, and we are going to increase the greens a little bit. So we go here where it says master and pick the greens. Mm -hmm. And here you can. The cool thing here is you can really play with the colors. So you can say, okay, my green is very saturated, but also it's very dark or it's very bright. So you can really play a lot with the color, or you can even change the color here with a hue. Cool. I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, but Too crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna increase the satur saturation and I'm gonna make it a little darker just because I want the card to pop more than the greens. Cool. So, and I want it to look very natural. And also I want to, I want the bright part to be here mm -hmm. and not here. That's why right. I'm kind of making it a little bit darker. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, uh, for our card to create a mock-up, it's very easy actually. You create a new layer, mm -hmm. then you create a square or a rectangle. Let's say it's this big. Mm -hmm. You fill it with a fill color, any color, doesn't matter. And then you click on the right 
uh, right mouse uh -huh. um, button and convert to smart object. So now you can go ahead. Actually, we can actually also modify this um, this uh, rectangle mm -hmm. to perfectly fit it to the to our card. Cool. So right now I'm gonna deselect Command D. I deselected it, and now I'm gonna press Command T to um, to modify my rectangle, cool. as you can see. Command T is transform, right? Yeah, correct. Nice. Okay, so now I have uh, pretty much the form that I need. I just gotta be careful that I have my envelope over here. I know this is not the most professional way to do it, but it's very easy. But the one thing we know about Photoshop so far is there are a million ways to exactly. do everything. Exactly, exactly. So now what I'm gonna do is, I know that my card kind of is uh, ends over here, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna try to avoid this area, and I'm gonna be moving around this top, top part. Cool. So I'm gonna take my little logo here, Mm, which one should we take? Mm. Maybe the black and white rosemary? Yeah, I think that would be nice. Okay, cool. So we're gonna take this logo here. We can also here. Ask, ask chat if you want. Yeah, but sure, let us to. know which one do you want us to use next. Jose's joining from Mexico. Hey, we welcome. Hedy in here. Cool. Ha Hafstein from Iceland and also Eduardo and Natalia from Ukraine. Oh, Natalia, welcome. And Estesham from Pakistan. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I want to go back to Mexico. I really love Cancun. Oh my it's gosh, beautiful. we went we went like a month ago and it was so nice. Did you like almost stay forever? <laughs> I would like to, but we don't, I only stayed for 24 hours, unfortunately, oh, but yeah, torture, I would love to. Almost. I know. <laughs> so here, I'm about to copy paste this, but as you can see here, we have vectors and I need to transfer it into a shape. And remember how yesterday we were scaling uh, these vectors and the line thickness always stays the same, so the proportion does not stay the same. Mm -hmm. Means I have to go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke, and now I have a shape. So now I, I can cool. just copy paste it, Command C, and paste it into my, into my Photoshop as a smart object. Nice. Right here, make it a little bit bigger. Say like that, yes. And I'm gonna turn off the black layer. Nice. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I'm closing, I'm clicking save. Mm -hmm. And now this logo is on my card. Whoa. Of course, now I can see that uh, that black maybe is not the best color. Mm -hmm. So I can still make changes to that. I can go ahead and uh, take a logo that's, uh, I think I had some, okay. Let's just make this one, copy paste it and make it white. Emmanuel says the images for the mock-ups are amazing, great art direction. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Huge compliment because Julia, this was her first time doing it. <laughs> and they're amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. I know this is not the most clean way to do this. I'm just creating a new, la a new uh, layer here and uh, just replacing the image with a mm. white image. So now I'm closing this, saving. And bam, nice. white looks way better, I think. Maybe we can include some information down here. Yeah, so nice. um, I have something that I've created for another card. Uh, let's see. Tim had a good suggestion too, not that we need it for this one, but mm -hmm. if you're ever um, transforming anchor points, like with the rectangle you did, if you hold down command or control, you can warp the perspective of it. Mm -hmm. So if you have something that's like facing away from you, you can make it look more realistic. Yeah, which exactly. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, you can you can definitely modify this uh, rectangle. In this case, it was pretty perfect, so I didn't have to modify it. Mm -hmm. But you can go ahead and uh, transform it, and you can also um, click this button up here, mm -hmm. which uh, makes you able to transform it, transform it even more. And now you can see, as I'm transforming this rectangle, my logo is also moving. So you can actually um, actually fit the logo into a perspective. That's cool. If you need to. Nice. Okay, cool. So what I wanted to do is I'm gonna I wanted to take this little part here that says "Can't wait to see you," mm -hmm. so we can insert a little message onto our card. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go into the same layer, smart object. Okay. 
Yep, that should cool. work. Okay. Save. And there we go. It's on our mock-up. Nice. It's that easy. That it's is really so that easy. easy. I told you this yesterday, but I'm ready to, to design a brand now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling inspired. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we can go ahead and add some here as well. Or awesome. we have our bag here as well. What I did with the bag uh, mm -hmm. was I saw that there was a lot of highlights and shadows in here because uh, the material is very glossy. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I just created a new layer that kind of mattifies it a little bit. Cool. And uh, I used the brand color that we picked. So I, I just applied the hex code from that I copied from uh, Illustrator awesome. in here. And bam, and see the difference. Yeah, that's great. Makes it very easy to, you know, to create a good contrast between logo and the bag. Mm -hmm. And it removes like any distraction you might have. Exactly. So you can really focus on the, on the fact that it's a mock-up. Exactly. And here again, I adjusted the brightness a little bit and it has a completely different appeal already. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You can also play with the hue and saturation, but I'm going to leave it for the sake of time saving right now. So, cool. um, okay, so let's go ahead and grab a logo again. Which one should we, maybe mm. some color? Yeah, I think a color logo would be fun. Maybe a pink one. Okay, this one? Yeah, that's, that looks good. Or actually the bag is blue, so maybe we should grab this one. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see how this is gonna work. Just a quick heads up to everyone, we have three minutes until the chat and win, and we've had a lot of new names and faces in chat, so make sure you stick around because you'll have a chance to win 100 free custom stickers in just three minutes. All you have to do is stay active in the chat and we'll be picking one lucky random winner. Okay. All right. Nice. Bam, now it's already a Brandon bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome. And then what we can do here is also either we can go and go ahead and create some kind of um, some kind of uh, overlay. Mm -hmm. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer. Um, actually, I'm gonna connect all these all the layers by clicking Command Alt and Shift and E. Mm -hmm. And this combines all the layers into one picture. Cool. So now I have everything combined. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this dodge and burn, D mm -hmm. and B. And here I'm gonna create a little shadow here and a little highlight so it looks more realistic as if this sticker or this logo is really on the bag. Cool. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pick the dodge tool. Mm -hmm. This one is a little big so I'm gonna get it a little smaller. And I wanna make sure it's very less hardness okay. so that the line is nice and smooth. So right now I'm creating a little highlight inside the logo. Nice. Okay. You tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe a little here. Okay. Hi, and now, Satish, welcome. Hi, Warren, welcome. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Go for it. No problem. <laughs> and now we're gonna create a little shadow. And we're gonna go to the burn tool. Again, we're gonna pick a little smaller brush and very little hardness. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go ahead where the shadow is, just gonna continue it on top of the logo. Cool. And now you can already see the difference, right? Right. It kind of creates a three-dimensional <laughs> effect. That's awesome. Okay, then let's go ahead and uh, put a little logo on top of, of this little uh, piece of uh, paper. Cool. I'm um, gonna create a new layer just for the sake of, you know, not messing things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new layers are your friend yeah. always. Right, and then uh, there we're gonna, what are we gonna put there? I don't know, maybe something, maybe just like the logo mark Oh look. Oh, Yesterday, yeah. somebody was saying that RM kind of is very, um, you know, characteristic, and I had this in my sketches as well, so mm -hmm. it's kind of similar. So I decided to create this little RM a variation of our logo as well. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that and go into our Photoshop. Copy, paste. And I'm going to turn it a little bit so it's exactly like our paper. 
and we have nice. our branded bag. <laughs> that is awesome. And here, of course, you can play. I mean, you can you can even create a pattern and apply it over the whole bag. It depends on on what what you feel like. Yeah, but right? now you have all the you know tools and techniques you need yeah. to get it done. And with that. It is chat win time. So Yay. really quickly before we play our hype up video, I want to explain to you how you can win. All you have to do is log in on behance.net slash Adobe Live and then type in chat. Um, let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know what you're working on. Are you a designer? Are you a creative? Are you none of the above? Um, just let us know. Say hi to us and then you'll have a chance to win a prize. And with that, we'll be right back. Yay. Chat Welcome win. back. All right, so get in there, chat, say hi to us. We will be picking a winner in about a minute. So you don't have to stress too much, but if you're watching and you haven't logged in yet, you'll want to do that right now. We've got Kroll and Megan and Elisa, Jordan, Jeff, Stephanie, Aurelia. We've got Paco Yay. in chat, and Paco's <laughs> trying to win. He's Some trying stickers. to rig the system. <laughs> <laughs> Paco is sitting next to us. <laughs> yeah. Megan, cool. Esther, Alexandra, Jacob. And you can make some wonderful stickers. Or, you know, maybe a fishing sticker. Or maybe a fishing sticker, yeah. That's <laughs> cool too. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Fo follow my, my, my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. We'll show, we'll, yeah, we'll show off your YouTube channel Yay. and your Behance and your Instagram in a bit. Congrats! But that's our winner, Noelle. I Noel. think Noelle said earlier this is her first time, he or she's first time winning, or first time in the chat, and you've won the chat and win, which is quite a feat. Oh, so. awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. We'll send you information in a little bit. I'll send it to you when I'm not hosting. Mm -hmm. From the Adobe Live name on Behance. So, congratulations again. Um, stick around. Uh, there will be more chat wins pretty much every week. Uh, this is the last one for the week, but if you didn't win this one, we have a consolation prize. You can get 10 stickers for $1. All you have to do is go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, and there's a little prompt on the screen, and you'll get 10 stickers for a dollar. Yeah, so. that's awesome. And I think they do free delivery. I've yeah. ordered, and it was free delivery. And I was like, for, what? For it's most really people. Just, it's really just $1? Yeah. Yeah, I, at least in the U.S. as mm -hmm. far as I know. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, cool. So we have our bag, uh, and of course we could play around more. And I'm just, you know, I'm just demonstrating for you guys a little bit what's possible. Uh, so let's jump onto the next one, next example. I want to show you something really, really, real quick. So you might think that these d details, these little dots, and these little dust particles don't matter, but um, if you look at this, I've done some, I've done some retouching. And it really does make a difference. Oh, nice. Seriously, As you can see. yeah. So what I did here, I also just went ahead with a stamp tool. And um, here you can see the whole picture. I mm. also removed the brand of the t-shirt. Right? Good call. We had someone so, in chat yesterday that said, I hate those Gildan shirts. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You can easily remove the uh, the branding of the shirt uh, as well with the stamp tool. I just love the stamp tool. You, you can just, you know, copy paste things uh, inside the photo. Uh, what's important if you're working on a shadow like this, mm -hmm. to copy paste the right color because, so you're sampling the color with the alt key, right? And then um, I can show you real quick what I mean. So. If you, for example, let's take a bigger, bigger brush. If you, for example, so this color is very different from this color, right? Mm -hmm. So when I want to remove something here and I copy paste a dark dot, you will see the dark, dark dot. Right. So um, what you need to do, you need to follow these lines. So if you have something here, you, you go and follow this line and copy from there and put it, you know. Right. Uh, to your spot. So um, that's what I something what I've learned. And for the edges, I always copy an edge and paste it. Nice. Let me get some cleaner edge. The thing is that here is a shadow in uh -huh. the background. So I might want to go do something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. You can't, you can't really see it. You know, from far, you cannot really see anything. Right, I doubt anyone's going to be, unless you're using it on a billboard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah. but yeah, for for this sake, this is actually pretty good, and it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so then I adjusted the brightness a little bit 
to make the t-shirt pop a little bit more. The background now is a little bit less, um, you know, mm -hmm. less dark. So then again, I did the same thing here with the card. Cool. Where I added the brand color. As you can see, the paper that I've picked here initially is uh, pretty orange, mm -hmm. but our uh, red tone is a little bit more red. And then uh, I went ahead to balance out all these highlights and shadows inside the t-shirt. I went ahead and created a mask cool. to um, to use the same color on the t-shirt. So how you can do it, it's very easy. You are creating a solid color layer, mm -hmm. right? It looks like this in the beginning, don't get scared. Here you copy paste your color. So I go into Illustrator, I go ahead and click on my color, Command C, copy paste, copy my, um, my hex code, mm -hmm. Command V, paste it in here. Nice. And then you click on this white, little white field here and click Command I, which in inverts the, um, cool. the color. So means now if I'm painting somewhere, I'm painting with this dark blue color. Nice. And uh, so what I did here is I just took a regular brush, just a large reg regular brush, and you just go ahead and paint all over the t-shirt, right? And then, because the more you paint, the, the more you cover all the details. Right. But you also want to have the details visible. So mm -hmm. you go ahead and uh, click soft light on the uh, overlay settings, yep. which makes it a little bit more subtle. Like you, you almost don't see it, but totally. it's, it still makes a difference. So that's a, that's the trick that that's I use. That's a great tip. That's the trick that I use um, mostly if I'm retouching food. So for example, the food contains beans, the green beans, uh, and I want to enhance the green color. Mm -hmm. I don't just go ahead and, uh, and uh, use the hue and saturation tool and incre increase all the greens. I create this layer, this uh, solid color layer, and just paint on top of those green beans that I need to uh, have green. So then, and I, I and I al always set it to soft light, so um, the color is more subtle. Cool. Yeah, it looks very natural. Thanks for showing everyone how to do that. Sure. Like that's a great pro tip. Also, our good friend Claudie is in chat. Yay, Claudie! So hi, Claudie. Welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to see you here. And uh, as you can see here, very easily, you can just put a logo on top, and it already looks realistic. So um, yeah, we can that's just. Great. Go ahead and copy paste uh, our business card that we already created. Cool. So let's just go ahead and make this white. Copy. Mm -hmm. And then Command V, Smart Object, put it on top of the card. Oops. Let's do this again. Put it on top of the card. Cool. Adjust the size a little bit. If you need to adjust the perspective, you can also do that afterwards mm -hmm. with a Command T. But mine is pretty, pretty much set. Yeah. All right. And now what you can also do is here you can also create. Um, you can you you can create an oh, overlay yeah. that kind of uh, takes the structure from the paper, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. You can experiment with that. That's really neat. Yeah, blending modes are super powerful. Yeah, they can make everything look better as long as you select the right one. True, sure. and something that I've discovered recently is actually pretty cool. I haven't been really working a lot with blending modes, but. Mm -hmm. um, here I have something, uh, it's actually an effect, Bival and Emboss. Mm -hmm. So here again, I had the, my photo right, and this color blue that I had on my paper was too bright. So I went ahead and took a, a hue saturation uh, adjustment layer, cool. and I adjusted the blue color into the darker tone. Remember how I was showing you um, that you can pick the blue, mm -hmm. and then you can make it dark. This is what I did here. So before it was like that, and I took the blues and made them dark. Cool. Right? And then you can also adjust the saturation of the blues specifically. Mm. So yeah. And then I put on my logo. Cool. Right? 
And this logo is actually in an effect called Bivalin Emboss. Nice. And these layer st uh, styles or um, blending options you can find in, um, okay. You can find in um, layer, somewhere here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... I always just search in the help thing. Yeah, anyway, so so it's called it's called Bival and Emboss mm -hmm. and it creates this amazing effect. The thing here only that I've that I've seen is that this logo looks very I've uh, doubled the layer so it's kind of increased effect. Mm -hmm. But what you can see here is that it, it's very sharp. But my paper has a little blurriness in it. So what I went ahead and did, I created a new layer with a whole photo mm -hmm. and I created some um, blurriness. I, I just used the uh, blur tool. Cool. And I went ahead and just blurred all over the, uh, the logo. That is bit. awesome. So it looks more natural. Yeah. And it's very easy to make. It looks almost like it's real. Totally. To yeah, I would believe it. <laughs> it's the first one in our game. Is it real <laughs> or is it not? Yeah, right. Okay, um, how much time do we cool. have left until... So we have 48 minutes okay, till we're cool. gonna do reviews, which means we have around around 30 minutes until okay. we'll start working in Dimension. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, so we have our business card here again. And uh, here we have the same thing, hue saturation was edited, brightness, I, I filled the red color again. Mm -hmm. And I added some logo here. And cool. what I did here is so we had this other we had this other mock-up with a business card. Yep. Where the business card is kind of half transparent here. So basically, when you turn around the business card, this looks like that. Ah, nice. So I wanted to Clever. show this effect of how the business card is, uh, you know, you can look at it from both sides. Mm -hmm. Just from this side is half transparent. What I did is just very simple. I just um, I just put the same business cards, flipped it, mm -hmm. and I decreased the opacity to 17%. Cool. So actually, this is the image that I put on top of this uh, photo, and I decreased it to 17%. You just made it match. And now it looks like it's actually printed on the other side. Yeah, that's awesome. And you can play with that. I mean, you can create designs that are supposed to be seen from the other side. If you're, for example, creating some kind of booklet or any book that has tra half transparent pages. Yeah, totally. So, um, or like if you're doing a mock-up for like a piece of glass, like a frosted yeah, piece of glass or for something. For example, yeah. So, so yeah. So Tim had some tips for us. If you right click on the layer, open the blending options and apply the bevel and boss filter, that's where you can find it. Okay, or cool. you can go to layer and then layer style. Up at the top. Yes, that's what it was. Layer style. Yeah. yeah. And then blending options. Yeah. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, I remember Tim. I was looking for it the other day as well. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, I'm, I'm always looking for blending options, but it's in layer style. Yeah. There are a lot of tools in Photoshop. I know, I know. <laughs> Photoshop is a big forest that you have to find your way through. <laughs> for sure. And yeah. then everyone makes their own paths and then kind of yeah. sticks to them. Yeah. Okay, so we have a bunch of mock ups here yeah. already. And uh, we can we can definitely use those to um, for our for our projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, here again we have we have this photo, very simple photo actually. Mm -hmm. But you can see this little corner here, and yep. there is some little things, you know, some little blemishes. Some little blem blemishes. So I went ahead and removed them. Cool. Right. So you can see the difference. Using and the I same also, techniques you showed earlier. Use the stamp exactly tool. stamp tool. That's my go-to. Yep. Um, I know many use also the healing uh, healing tool, mm -hmm. healing brush tool, but I personally I prefer the stamp tool b uh, because it really copy pastes what you yeah. know exactly what I want. Totally. So um, yeah, here another example. Increase the brightness. Cool. Yeah, and this is again uh, similar to what we did before with the other card. Cool. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and you I can use it. this. You can use this in your Behance project, uh, whatever. Yeah. Presentations. So yesterday, somebody was asking how I present logos to clients. Mm -hmm. So imagine if I if I had just presented this logo to my client, she wouldn't know how to really use it. But now, 
cards. I give her a little context. Right. Okay, this can be a greeting card, and you put your logo on it, and it looks really nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, and you can even put a little stamp on it as well. Ooh, I like that. That's what I pictured when you were designing these. A little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little stamp, right? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Do you? And I know this is super basic, but let's say someone goes in and they do a mock-up like this. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips on how to export that artboard? For people this and then yeah okay then you, can, you just go to file export uh, you can do a quick export as JPEG is mm -hmm. what I'm doing usually you can also export it as um, there's many options if you have something that has to be without background or um, what I do sometimes is for example I have a client file and um, I have created many layers adjustment layers and I want to send this file over to my client and I want to keep the whole quality and everything. It's mm -hmm. gonna be a big file, but yeah. save as, save on your computer, on desktop, save mm -hmm. as a TIFF file. Nice. Includes all the layers. That means it's a picture file, it's a photo file, but if the client opens it, they can see all the layers. They can cool. see the work that I've done. So that's actually, actually a good tool to show, okay, I've done a lot of work on this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the photo that you gave me. And if you want to make them wait to download it. <laughs> Sometimes exactly. TIFF files can be massive. And then what I also do is I group the layers of my work. Create group, group from layers. Okay, and then you can easily see what has been done on the photo. That's awesome. You, you have all the edits that have been done in one group and you can easily see the difference. That's great. So, Tracy's joining from Australia. Our hearts Yay. are out to Australia. We mentioned this yesterday, but um, there was a lot going on there, and it's definitely a tragedy. So if you're watching and you feel inspired, you should try to contribute either financially or with your creative skills. Yeah. Help out what's going There's on. There's a lot going on on Instagram these days. Mm -hmm. Anna, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Yeah. So we have 12-ish minutes. Okay, cool. All right, let's get let's get on to this one and make cool. put a little message in here. So uh, again, here in this photo, I adjusted the hue and saturation and the brightness. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my little message that I had here. Where was it? Right here. Can't wait to see you. Copy paste into Photoshop nice. as a smart vector. Adjust the size. Boom. Kind of like a little message in the bottle. Yeah, I love it. And you said this could be like sort of the plant nutrient stuff. You know, yeah, sometimes exactly. Sometimes get the little packet. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So yeah, but uh, that was actually my husband uh, husband's idea. I just wanted to do a, a message in the bottle and then just connect it to the flowers, uh -huh. you know. Um, or it can nice. be some letter that's um, that the person who ordered the flowers wrote um, to receive nice. to the recipient. So yeah, that would be some like little brand element. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's all about those little ideas that, that you give. Yeah, the that's what pushes client. it over the top. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ellis, thanks for joining us. Lucine from Russia. I might have mispronounced your name, but Julia can help. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy. Which one? Thanks for being here, Lucine. Ah, uh, Luzine. Hi from Russia. Luzine. Oh, yeah. Katie Humble, thanks for joining. Good to see you. Cool. We Anna saying had, um, she loves the brand identity. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Stephanie said she felt so inspired yesterday that she rebranded her business just for fun. Oh, wow. That's that always cool? the, the most, that's the greatest thing that you can really apply to, apply to yourself. Mm -hmm. You should be your, your best client. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I figured out that um, usually designers put themselves last because, of course, they want to make the money and they need to make the money, obviously, but your brand is what you're getting out there and, mm -hmm. and what you're getting out there also comes back. So if you really want to have more clients, you need to work on your own brand. So. Absolutely. I think sometimes designers get too busy even just to update their portfolios. Yeah. And they'll work on all this amazing work, but they don't actually have it saved or aggregated, or they don't have the story anywhere. Yeah. If you take sure. the time to do to do that, the good work that you do ends up feeding on itself, building exactly. a business around it. 
Yeah, now I'm I'm trying to I don't like the red too much on the blue, so I'm I'm trying to put the white text on it instead. Mm -hmm. So I just went ahead in uh, Illustrator and changed the color cool. into white, and I can now see which one I like better. Oh, nice. So white is definitely better, right? Yeah, I like it. I think red and blue can be tricky, pretty much yeah. always. And also, if you see the whole composition of the, the photo, mm -hmm. the flowers are white. You know, there's, uh, you don't want to have too much color, so. Um, oops, I left the red here. And yeah, and then we can also go oh. ahead and, and um, you can decrease the opacity just a little bit. So nice. it looks more natural. Yeah, it doesn't seem so sharp now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I would do my mock-ups. And then that's I would awesome. export them, as I showed you, as mm -hmm. JPEGs. Mm -hmm. For um, for the screens, it's uh, you can ex export them at 72 DPI per uh, DPI, that's per inch. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're exporting this for print, for example, if you have a print portfolio and you want to include this photo into your print portfolio, um, to use the maximum uh, capacity or ability of this picture, you would ex uh, export it in 300 dpi. That's per inch. Yep. So higher resolution printers cool. usually print with 300 dpi. Nice. But do you keep it digital? 72 is fine. 72, but I always go to 150. <laughs> oh yeah. Because I I I don't really trust 72 too much. Although it should be enough, but when you zoom in, you can right yeah, away see yeah. the difference. So. That's a good tip. Um, Ty is wondering. Also, John's joining from Fiji. Thanks for joining us, John. Oh, cool, Fiji. Yeah, I've never been. I always you? wanted to go. No. <laughs> Me too. It's on the list. Yay. Ty is wondering if you ever try using a cover, a color overlay layer style instead. Color are, overlay. Are you familiar with? We wait. We did cover color overlays earlier. Yeah. Okay. I uh, think, yeah, we did cover yeah. overlays actually in this picture. Yep. We have a color overlay right here. Yep. So we that's wanted how to make this, yeah. We wanted to make color. this a little, a little bit more red instead of orange, mm -hmm. so the brand color kind of matches everywhere, and all the elements. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually a color fill. So. Okay. So what happens here is basically you fill the whole image, and then I inverted it, and then it's um, the color first disappears. But when you paint on it with a, with a brush tool, the color appears where you painted. So. Right. That's how I do it. Cool. Fernanda, Anthony, welcome. Yay, Thanks for joining. Yay, welcome everyone. Yeah. Okay, cool, let's export those. Um, export as JPEG. Sounds good to me. Stephanie's wondering if you mind sharing your mock-up images. Sure, I can share them. Uh, where can I best share them? Mm. I think if you check out the Behance project later on, I'm mm -hmm. gonna post that on the weekend. Um, just, uh, just follow me on Instagram and then you'll know. <laughs> Just another sunny girl. Just another sunny girl. Yes. I have it pulled up on my screen, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm always trying to, you know, give a little insight into what I'm doing, and um, you know, post stories about um, my workflow and about, you know, just lifestyle stuff. So, yeah, that's um, right. just make sure. Give her to a follow, and also the around. project will be posted on Julia's Behance, Julia, and then four six DF. Yeah, I should be also linked next to the chat uh, button. Yep. So um, if you're watching the video on the right side, there should be an info uh, button. Inception. <laughs> Yay, there we are. Hi, us. Yeah, you just go to you info follow. And, and follow. Yeah. yeah. If you have any questions, if you have any, if you want any feedback, let me know. Mm -hmm. so write me, shoot me a message on Behance. I'm, I'm really open to, you know, helping people. Thanks, so, Julia. Aw. You're the best. <laughs> Diffix is wondering if you add watermarks to your projects. Oh, um, I never had to so far. I never produced a work that was that expensive or hmm. that valuable. I mean, I think I think photographers are the ones who really should put watermarks on their on their photos because mm -hmm. they can be copied 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 and used without their permission. Right. But uh, for graphic design. Not really. Cool. <laughs> I, I don't think there's like yet. a general rule there, but some people like to do it, others don't. Hmm. Yeah. I share my work on Behance. Uh, I think from there, it's already published and everybody can just copy paste it. Right. Technically. 
And I mean, <laughs> if there's any questions, they can they know at the end of the day who created it. Exactly. Um, because it's yours. You published it. Exactly. There were a couple questions earlier, and Camila's wondering the same about if you have any if you have any advice on how to charge for branding and for work like mm -hmm. this. And you know you can get into it as deep as you feel comfortable, but mm -hmm. they're just wondering about pricing and charging and how mm -hmm. to make a business out of it. Yeah, first of all, I would not make your pricing uh, published online. Mm -hmm. um, I would make it very discreet and uh, client by client, because um, I have made the experience. I have been working with very small clients that can be like a boutique or a shop next door. But it can also be clients like the agency that works with uh, Jameson Whiskey, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there the pricing, of course, will be very different. What I do is if I have smaller tasks like retouching a photo, I have a base price for that. So I, tr I account how much, how many hours I would need for, for the retouching. Mm -hmm. It's always plus minus. It's never exact, but I just make it easier for my client uh, just, you know, to make a uh, estimate, you know, yeah. about how many hours I'm, I'm going to be working on it. So then I'm, uh, the agency that I'm working with, I'm always charging them the same. Got it. But if I have branding projects, if somebody comes to me and uh, needs a branding project, it always depends how much audience will this branding reach. Hmm. Uh, how much responsibility do I have in creating uh, these visuals in uh, exporting this file in the exact format that they need it and yeah. not, uh, you know, and not uh, in se 72 DPI uh, digital version that they're going to try to print later on. Right. And it was my fault because I didn't give them the right, uh, right resolution. Hmm. So uh, it always depends. I would really consider tracking your work, tracking how long you need for doing something. And based on that, uh, I would I would make create prices for things like, for example, creating a business card. You probably know you, it will take you maybe, I don't know, five to 10 hours, mm -hmm. right? Or if it's a client that has um, uh, business cards that need a variety for different people, like a hundred people need a business card yeah, and it's all different names, then of course you need to charge differently. Right. Just, just account your time and then charge per project. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to think about the scope of the project too. Like, yeah. um, if your client needs full like brand identity, a voice, mm -hmm. and brand research, and like everything that goes along with also creating the designs, then I think that's also probably a different mm -hmm. conversation than if they need like, you know, I need a, just a new business card, or we need you know one type of thing. So yeah, Jason if you're doing is, brand strategy, yeah. that's an extra element. Jason is asking how many eyes are going to be on the on the job is a big that is a big one so um if i'm retouching a photo for uh jameson's social media page there is 150,000 followers for example right or 200,000 followers i know that 150,000 people might see it mm -hmm. at the minimum so um that's how you can see or you can see you can uh find out about the company on on social media how much um how much uh, how many people are following them how many um, you know, potential clients they have, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's Always really nice depends. advice. <laughs> I think if you can start to order and prioritize some of the things you spoke about, it's it becomes a lot easier to come up with pricing structures. Yeah. Um, it also is dependent on every individual designer's skill level and experience and what exactly. you can provide. Exactly, that too. Um, but, to be honest, uh, I've, I would charge less per hour when I'm a beginner um, because I know I'm going to take more hours, but yeah. I'm not going to charge uh, less when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm uh, already a pro and I know I only take one hour instead of five hours for somebody else who just started off. So, I'm, you know, your price goes up mm -hmm. over time. Right, which is normal. And I think when you're more of a beginner, you can afford to maybe charge a little less because in a sense, the experience of having some clients and building your portfolio also has more the value on that's a little weighted more a little more yeah. heavily because you're trying to like find your voice and build your identity whereas later on once you already have established yourself mm -hmm. you can afford to you know yeah and also if you're providing a branding uh solution for somebody it depends are you creating only one logo are you only creating this little thing or are you creating a variety 
that they can use over different media, mm -hmm. you know? So that's also a thing that you have to consider. Is it only, is it only this part that you're creating or is it all of that? Because this, this is way more than just a logo, yeah. right? It's a, it's a whole branding concept. Right. It's a whole brand. It's, it requires thinking, it requires strategy. You want to reach the right clientele. So, um, it's a different, different approach than just creating a logo. Yep. So actually this graphic design stream is a branding design stream. It very much is. <laughs> not, not just logo design. Sometimes graphic designers in a, in a sense too are, are copywriters. Like you're coming up with a voice for. Exactly. For your Brand your voice, brand uh, voice. Yeah. Uh, which guys. also has immense value and it's not necessarily visual, but it has to be cohesive with the designs you've created. Exactly, and that's actually the start. Before you even start working on something, you need to know the brand voice, so uh, and 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 the brand strategy to reach the right ad audience, right? Yep. So um, yeah, that's always very important to know before you even start doing something. That was a great question. Thanks for asking, Camila, and everyone else who asked. Yeah, should we move on to dimension? We, the yeah. things. Let's go for it. We yeah. have about 30 minutes until we're going to review designs shared in Discord. Yeah, let's do it. We can um, jump into Discord, uh, into um, Dimension, and I can show you guys a little bit uh, um, about the techniques that I use, about the tools that you have there. For some people that are a little bit shy using 3D programs, this might be very useful because Dimension is actually very easy to use yes. and very intuitive, and it, it's not complex at all. So, um, yeah, I'm going to show you also how to make it more complex if you want it to. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to look at the rendering that we did. You're going to swear that this is a real <laughs> picture. It's kind yeah, of freaky. Right? So it actually came out pretty good if you look at this. Uh, this could be, for example, say Rosemary, uh, the store, the flower shop, produces a flower uh, scent, scented oil or something like mm -hmm. that. This could be, for example, the application of the brand to some kind of packaging. Totally. All right, so let's jump into it and let's cool. see. Um, yeah, let's see let's what see you what can do. Let's see what Dimension can do. Push it yeah. to the limits. <laughs> Hi, yes. Colby. Thanks for joining. I'm Good to see go. you. Colby's been a guest on Adobe Live. Oh, cool. I also met him at Creative South. Awesome. I need to go to Creative South. I'm, oh, I'm like yeah. so excited about that. You, I'm planning on going this year, so. You I want to go too. <laughs> you should, you should. And anyone else out there, if you go, yeah. it'd be nice to meet you. Okay, cool. So we have our little file here, our uh, Illustrator document that we just saw on my other computer. And what we're going to do is we're going to create PNGs because technically you can copy paste things into Dimension, but sometimes there is little, you know, pixelation happening. Uh, like the picture you just saw, it was uh, this one logo um, on the bottle was a little pixelated. It was because I, cop I copied it from my library. So what I'm going to do here for better results, I'm, pro I'm promising, uh, because I had to make uh, the experience myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create uh, little artboards uh, on all the logos that, that I have here so I can use those on my mockups in Dimension. Okay. Stephanie, just to answer your question real quick, Creative South is a creative conference and it's held in Columbus, Georgia every year. And it's around 800 or so creatives and they all come together and there are a series of talks and workshops, but it's mostly just a chance to make some good creative connections. So it's a place where we've made a lot of connections that have actually been guests on Adobe Live. And Lucene, to answer your question about Behance, we find guests on Adobe Live, guests for Adobe Live through Behance all of the time. So. Keeping your profiles. Like me, for example. Yeah, exactly. Keeping them updated is um, really important because that's how people can find your work. Yeah, and also Adobe Portfolio is an amazing tool. It's a, you can create your free website, basically. You can also link your domain name to it. So it's not uh, just, um, I don't know, masalska.myportfolio.com, mm -hmm. but it's masalska.design. It's my domain name that goes into my Adobe Portfolio. And it's amazing. You can just really create a website and it's free. And uh, whenever you add projects to your Behance, they automatically get added and updated in your Adobe Portfolio website. Yes. So, and I think you can create up to three of them or something I like that. I think so. 
Yeah, so um, that's cool. On. You can you can create different portfolios for different purposes, and you can also turn on and off the projects that you want to show or not. For example, you have applied for a job that is a, for a packaging designer, and you only want to show your packaging projects. So you turn off the other projects, mm -hmm. and your portfolio only shows um, the packaging work. Super, super nice. And the team that runs Portfolio and the connection with Behance, they're constantly working on it and refining mm -hmm. it, so it'll just continue to get better. Yeah. Just pretty cool. So real quick, I just wanted to show you how to make artboards super quick. Cool. So what you do is I'm going to group all of these logos. This one I'm also going to outline because we still had some vector over there. OK group and then now what you do is you just go on onto the artboard tool and you just click on the you just click on the let me see okay let's do it again group mm -hmm. and then you go onto the artboard tool and click on this and it creates the perfect, perfect. frame for this logo and um, it's just like very precise. So you don't have to, you know, be scared that you cut off a piece of the vector mm -hmm. or something. That's just make sure tip. to group them. I would totally try to draw, <laughs> draw it in yeah. <laughs> and get frustrated. It's just, it's just, it just <clears throat> makes it easy to export mm -hmm. the things that you have here. Aaron Draplin's going to be speaking at Creative South this year. So Anthony's hoping oh, nice. he can go. I met him at Ma uh, Max this past year. He's really nice. I met him at Max and I met him on an event during the Design Week 2017. Nice. Also he had his little shop as usual. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> and his merch, uh, merch uh, store. Things. Really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. I also really like to watch his um, YouTube videos where mm. he's uh, making some really, um, <laughs> really interesting logos for like huge brands. You know how sometimes br brands need a very corporate corporate logo. So he's always inspired by the very old um, typefaces, uh, cool. you know, American uh, industry logos, and all. It's, it's very interesting. Oh, nice. I'll have to check those out. I have not seen those yet. Yeah, so nice. okay. So basically, yeah. So we have just just to give you a timer mm -hmm. countdown. We've got 22 minutes until we'll be designing or reviewing designs on Discord. Okay, sounds good. Cool. I'm going to hurry up then. <laughs> Object path outline stroke here again. Group and create an artboard. Okay, we have a couple things here and let's let's group these as well. Create artboards. Actually, actually, if you just have a frame like this, mm -hmm. you don't have to group them because they're gonna be in, all the parts are gonna be inside this uh, frame anyway. So nice. Okay. All right, it's the almost done, guys. Master. <laughs> You're making little homes for them. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> just like yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So we have a bunch of stuff already. Cool. Yeah, okay, so let's export all of those. Export as desktop, new folder. Anthony Sanchez says utilitarian design is his thing. So what you were referring to? Oh, like okay. An industrial design. Anthony says utilitarian design. Utilitarian. Yeah. That's an interesting word. No, that's not what we wanted. Export as PNG, use artboards, all. Go to desktop, Rosemary, bam. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, this is one, bi uh, one big one that we had before. Okay, oh, we see. have, so here this is where, where you can pick how many dots per inch mm -hmm. or points per inch uh, you want to have the resolution in. Right. So 300 for print. I will pick medium right now because just because we're going to be working in dimension and you want to have the file as small as possible because dimension can be uh, running a little hot. Okay. It can be a beast depending on what your system is. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see if we have all the logos here exported. 
and we do. Nice. We have all the different logos here that we can use for our dimension experiment. Cool. Let's bring them in. Let's, uh, I want to delete this one. I should also Just mention that um, Dimension, mention that Dimension. Mention that Dimension. <laughs> uh, they recently upgraded, I think, their um, graphics engine. Yes. The last, oh my gosh. Not that long. The rendering got so much better. Yeah. So much better. It's, it's way better than it used to be. So if you tried it like a year ago and it was making your computer too hot and you couldn't handle it, you might want to try it again. Yeah. Because it probably will work more smoothly. Okay. So I wanted to show you guys just real quick when I open Dimension what I do to have the exact um, file that we're going to create. So cool. I'm just going to go and create new. And right now I'm working with the basic settings. Let me make this big. Mm -hmm. And then you can just zoom into this. So the, you can see the size of the artboard up here. Mm -hmm. Right now it's a pretty good size for publishing online. 1024 cool. by 768 is pretty good resolution. So what we're going to do right now is on the left side here, you see different filters. You can filter the models, which is just a 3D pro uh, object. You have materials that you can later on apply to your object. Nice. You have lights. And this is really cool, actually, because this is the kind of moods you can create. You can actually um, make your objects look very interesting with mm -hmm. the light. That's how you make them look super realistic, too. Yeah. Exactly. And here are some cool backgrounds that you can use. You can also upload your own backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, if you go into environment on the right side and background, and here the background right now is white. Cool. Let's uh, switch it to our brand color, the light pink. So I'm just going to I'm just going to pick our light pink square and I'm going to copy the the hex code. Nice. And bring it into um, hex right here. And here I can paste our code. And now my background is the same color as our brand color. So um, that's the background set. This is basically the ground, f the ground plane. Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily need to use it. Just use it as a space. Mm -hmm. This is for your orientation. So let's pull up an object in. It's actually very easy. I mean, Dimension is so easy to use. I was so scared of 3, 3D programs when I was studying industrial design. Mm -hmm. I used to hate it. But now, this makes it so easy. So you just pull in the, the object, right? Mm -hmm. And here, you have this amazing tool that lets you do so many things to the object. Cool. The green turns it this way. Mm -hmm. The blue turns it in, into Z. I'm going to go back on this because I don't want to mess it up. And uh, this one goes. In, in this X, um, cool. a, um, how do you call it, X's? Yeah, the X plane. X plane, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now these little squares here, they adjust the size. So if you click on the square, cool. it adjusts the size in the X direction. See you later, Mr. Square. Now you're yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing you can, you can, <laughs> you can do a Z <laughs> direction, right? And the same thing you can do to the top. But if you hold the shift button, Whoa. it adjusts into all directions. Whoa. Okay, so we, we want to make our box a little bit bigger. Now we're getting crazy. Okay, so now by just clicking on the object and, and moving it with your mouse, you, you're moving it on this ground plane. Nice. Which is awesome. I mean, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's check out the settings for this object. If you see here, cube box, right? Mm -hmm. You click on this little arrow. And it brings you to the options for this specific object. You have the base color, which we are going to pick our brand color, uh, the dark blue. Nice. OK, so let's go to dark blue. Take the hex code, copy, paste, bam. Now our nice. box is light blue. We're so uh, on brand blue. right now. Hmm? We're so on brand right now. Yeah, right? And now what we can do is, first of all, you can change the material to different materials. Cool. Um, and that's really fun. Now what we have, what we can also do is, so this, these are the objects that are like already in the program and um, you can just use them. But you can also go to, let me see, um, applications. 
How do I get? We're looking okay. for stuff. I want. I want to go to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, internet. Internet. Wake up. Yes. Stock okay, has you some can cool go. Stuff. Yeah. So you go to stock.adobe.com. Mm -hmm. Bam. And I'm gonna sign in real quick. Don't look. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was peeking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ha. Ah. Bingo. Yes, okay. So I'm logged in now. And now whatever I oh I got my credits, yes. <laughs> hey, nice. Um so here, the cool thing is you have the option to pick 3D models from here yep. straight into your library. So I go to 3D and then I'm gonna look for an oil bottle because I wanna have a packaging, for example, for an oil oil bottle. It's right here. And I'm gonna re-download it. I have downloaded before. Mm -hmm. You can see it's already licensed with that little banner there. Exactly. And it's free. There is a lot of objects that you can download for free. So mm -hmm. you just have to check. So most of them are free. Some yeah. of them are you have to buy. But it's not the only site. There is many, many other sites that 3D designers use yeah. where you can download objects. You can download literally anything. And, and it can be any shape, any color. Mm -hmm. And you can also download materials uh, and uh, environments and you yep. can put it all into Dimension. I think okay. last year the Dimension team added a bunch of NASA 3D objects, which are that kind of so fun cool. to play with if you're into space. That is really cool. OK, now I have here my starter assets. If I go into libraries, mm -hmm. I have my own libraries. So this is where I have my Adobe Live library. Cool. And in this Adobe Live library, I already have licensed some photos for my uh, you know, my mock-ups and all of that. But also I have my two packaging models mm -hmm. that I'm just going to drop in here. Ta-da! And it's tiny. <laughs> but the good thing is we can adjust the size. <laughs> we can adjust the size like this or like that. Cool. Okay. So now this bottle I show you guys a little magic which is so easy. So we take our logo. Right? Rosemary. Mhm. Mm we take our look. Let's take another one. Let's take one that has a black background. And we just pull it on top of this bottle. Right there. And no. it's already applied to the to the shape of the bottle. Too easy. And then now I'm going to adjust the size of this little sticker now. And I can move it around. I can really move it around around the whole bottle. And it makes it so easy to wow. apply to apply graphics on onto objects. And I really encourage you guys, pr try this out because it's it's so easy and it makes things, you know, it just makes things look so nice. Mm -hmm. It can really bring that, like, you know, when you hand over the presentation of your branding assets, you can really bring it to the next level with exactly. something like this. So now I did the same thing on the box. It does it automatically. Wherever you drop it, that's where it puts it, it, puts it on. So. Nice. And the cool thing here is, so you can decide how the placement is. This is a decal placement, so it's just one logo. Mm -hmm. But you can also put a fill. For example, if you have a pattern, you can make uh, make it fill the object. Nice. Um, I mean, obviously, in this case, it's not very beneficial, but, um, but sometimes pattern, right? sometimes you can create a pattern. Yeah. Um, Tim mentioned too, just like you did, that Dimension accepts non-Adobe stock assets, any OBJ, FBX, OBJ files, STL, yeah. SKP, yeah. JLTF, yeah. or JLB file. And if you want to build your own object um, or you know make some weird uh, specific shape that you want to build, mm -hmm. there is a ton of uh, free software that you can use to build a, a shape. Um, for example, I think Blender uh, yeah. you can download for free or whatever. And from there, you just export the object file, put it in to your dimension, apply your brand assets, and then you already have the perfect mock-up. It's awesome. <laughs> so I wanted to show you one more thing, which I think is really necessary to know. So this is basically the adjustment of the horizon. Cool. Okay. So from here, you can really change the way you see the photo, the way you see the objects. Mm -hmm. And same thing you can do with camera settings. Um, Let me zoom in here more. Okay. All right. So, um, and you can also adjust the environment. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So now we have the background, but also cool. we can adjust the global lighting. Global lighting will make your objects brighter or darker. Mm -hmm. And you can also rotate the light nice. around your objects, just like a lamp that you yeah. rotate around your um, object that you want to take a picture of. Then you can also adjust the shadow opacity that will fall under your um, objects. And if you, for example, put a ground plane that's glass and you want to adjust the reflection opacity cool. so that your objects re reflect or reflect less on this plane, you nice. can adjust it here as well. And the roughness too um, is something that you can play mm -hmm. with. Then we have environment light. We have this image at this moment, but there's a bunch of other lights that you can use. As I was showing you earlier, you can go to starter assets, mm -hmm. or you can also import lights from uh, from other assets. Yeah. And um, you can see there's circle light, square light, three-point light, sunlight, studio low-key light. There's different settings that you can adjust cool. to apply to your um, uh, to your objects. Okay. Nice. Now let's let's go ahead and render this. Let me um, put this one a little bit down. Oops. Did we add any textures to this? Or we just leave it the way that it is? Um, wait a second. Oh, sorry. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> We've entered the matrix. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I actually don't know why I did that. Yeah. Anyways. Seems to have inverted for some reason. Anyway, so let's, let's use this tool. It helps us uh, get into oh. the right position. So this tool is also really cool. It's the orbit tool. Mm -hmm. And the shortcut for that is the one or the le left uh, mouse uh, mouse key. Cool. This tool pan tool is uh, for you to to move the to move the whole scene around. And then you can also move your art. So this is an artboard really. And you can also in, um, set the uh, settings for your artboard. Here, the resolution again. I'm leaving it at 72 because we don't want it, the rendering to take mm -hmm. too long. Yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, this could be something that we could already render. Cool. Let's see. And I have seen so many cool rendering projects on Behance as well. Yeah. Maybe Jesus. we can take a look at those as well. Have you seen Jesus Ramirez's scene he made? Which one? He made a scene, like a living room scene, using uh, only dimension. Okay. Oh, I have to show you this in a second. I need to find it real quick. Okay, so we have our little object, right? Let's um, let's see the light, how it falls right now. So this is just a preview. This is not how the render will look like in the end. It will actually look way more realistic. And you can see here, mm -hmm. you can really see the structure of this object. Right. If you zoom in. A little bit more, if I zoom in a little bit more, you will see that this uh, paper actually has this paper structure. Mm -hmm. And I think this is amazing. It's really cool. It's super cool. It's a glossy and it's got a little bit of yeah. texture to it. Exactly. And when you bring in 3D models, you can apply textures like that to them, which is cool. Yeah. So let's go into rendering. Rendering is very interesting too because you can either uh, exp uh, or render your file in PNG, which only allows you to have a, a photo or a picture of it, mm -hmm. or you can render it in PSD in 16 bits uh, channel, where you can actually um, edit your backgrounds and uh, your rendering in Photoshop afterwards. Cool. So um, let's call this um, Rosemary, and you can also save it to uh, to the cloud, but it's in, in beta version. Um, and then you decide where you want to save it. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm gonna, I want to save it to my uh, to my desktop. Okay, yeah, let's Dude, start. Cool. So we're gonna let this render while we do some designs here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention to everyone that um, I th I'm, the 3D team actually launched like a new space for Creative Cloud at Max, which was like the 3D and immersive design space. Mm -hmm. So the team is working really a lot right now on updating and improving dimension and adding arrow into the fold, which we don't have time to show today, but you could actually take these 3D models and then use your phone to see them in real life. Like you could place it onto a table mm -hmm. or do some sort of realistic mock-up with oh, it. Oh yeah, arrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I have played with that. It's so exciting. It's yeah. so cool. I think uh, I think it's also good if you're an, a UX designer and you want to um, work with some kind of um, 
uh, visuals for uh, like, a, I don't know, like Google Glasses or something. Yeah, like a heads up interface. Yeah, 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 like a heads up interface. And totally. then you can place it in your environment. You can make it ha semi transparent. Mm -hmm. And it really looks like a, a virtual screen. Yeah, so it's cool, cool too, because like I, I haven't seen this actually personally in stores, but I think like Nike and Apple and some other stores have experimented with like using augmented reality to like show their products in the mm -hmm. store at different levels. Mm -hmm. So you could potentially like look at a, a pair of shoes with your phone and then it makes it them AR and like deconstructs them and shows what mm -hmm. materials are inside of it and some different cool things. And you can actually mock that up and try it awesome. out with Vero. Yeah, cool. that's so much fun. And yeah. I have I, th I have the iPad version of it and I just I just want to play around with it. For, yeah. for, for this year, I have planned to do more 3D work and to do more, um, you know, some AR AR or something like that, you know, graphics. I can't wait to see it. That's going to yeah, be cool. Yeah, that's cool. So, guys, this was so quick. 44 seconds. And the picture You're is done. done. Yeah, cool. it's done. Okay. It's cool. amazing. So, so this <laughs> is cool. We thought this was going to take like Yeah, we thought it's going to take a long time, but <laughs> uh, but now what you can do is you can go ahead and open this picture in in um, Photoshop. Mhm. Mm okay, now let's take a look. And we can actually change the backgrounds and and all the things. And it looks so, so realistic. I mean, I'm surprised. Yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah, that's cool. All right, now you can see there's different layers here. Mm -hmm. now, there we have the rendered image. You can even remove the background. Cool. You, you can just remove the background, export this picture as a PNG, mm -hmm. and you can place it in your presentation or wherever, you know, on, the, on, the, on any background, on any photo. You can actually even find a photo of a table and place it on top of a table and it will look super real. Yeah, so. totally. Yeah, and also you can, uh, if you click on the color, you can really change the color. Nice. You can really it really adjust. does look like a product shot. Like, yeah. I, would, I would have a hard time believing that that's not real. Yeah, right? <laughs> See, the resolution here is pretty low, but therefore um, the, the rendering was really quick. Mm -hmm. So for example, what I did in, uh, in, in my other project where you saw the animation, what I did was I took the exact position and then I made slight adjustments. For example, mm. I turned this box a little bit and this box a little bit to, to this side, and then I rendered it again. Cool. So then... Um, Let's just do it real quick. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Because we a have few some minutes. time. <clears throat> okay. And we can continue do that, doing that afterwards Bruno as well. was wondering if you can create 3D typography and dimension. And I don't, I'm sure the team is working more on authoring 3D objects. I don't know all of the specifics, but right now I think you would have to design that 3D text in another program. You can even do that in Photoshop. And then you can bring it into dimension and play around with it the way that we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I hope that helps out. I also have um, Jesus Ramirez's project pulled up if you want to take a look. Yeah, let's take a look at it. So Jesus made this uh, this whole scene using Dimension and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So none of this is real. Mm -hmm. But it's really freaky because it really looks real. Yeah, it does. So he made a bunch of different angles where you can see different objects in this room and this whole scene was rendered and then finished, rendered in Dimension and then finished in Photoshop. And so just like another example of like, really with a program like this, the sky's the limit, you're just really limited by your imagination. Yeah. And you can do some amazing stuff. Yeah, I think, uh, I think for Dimension, it's very useful to learn about lighting because that actually is what makes it look realistic. Mm -hmm. The lighting and, um, mm, and the whole environment, how you how you put it together. So the arrangement of objects is definitely also very important to yeah. to consider. Absolutely. I think actually an example of that is on the floor here. I'm sure Jesus added this lighting on the floor that's supposed to mimic the sunset that's happening on the backdrop he added in. He might have done that in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And it really makes it look a lot more real. That's so, cool. Yeah. Just an example of what you can do. Awesome. Yeah, I'm already at my third rendering and it's going to be exciting. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, even make a little animation afterwards. Cool. That would be awesome. Yeah, so we're going to be reviewing, just heads up everyone, we're going to be reviewing designs. These are actually daily creative challenge designs. So what we'll be doing is reviewing um, today's challenge, which is, let me refresh this page. That was yesterday's challenge. Today's is actually to use transform tools and is to create a postcard. So Kathleen had a tutorial and a live stream earlier this morning, and then 
folks were creating designs, some of you were creating design, designs while we were live, and then they were sharing them on Photoshop Discord. So if you want to get there, you can just go to discordapp.com slash invite slash Adobe Photoshop. You don't need any of this stuff. Mm. Um, and then you can join the Discord. So that's where we'll be reviewing these. Yeah. And if you want, we can just try them out. And yeah, if, let's I do mean, it. If you want to keep doing that, we can do that for a few minutes. But yeah, so we can ch check these out. So this is what's been shared. I'll just scroll down to the very newest one and get things ready to go. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep on rendering a little bit and cool. then um, meanwhile we can look at the submissions. Okay, great. Crawl wants design battles. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the future that'd be fun. The I'm challenges are supposed to be not too competitive in nature. Yeah. But sorry. I'm surprised how quick this was, this is rendering right now. I mean it's it's low. Uh, it's low resolution, but uh, the renderings are going uh, every 30, 40 seconds. Yeah. That's great. So which one are you on now? Your fourth, fifth? This is the fourth. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So what we're going to do is take all of the renders that Julie is working on and then create an animation out of them yeah. after we do these design reviews. But we're just going to review designs that have been shared in the challenge channel under feedback. Mm -hmm. And this is the Photoshop Discord server. Yay. And so. somebody was asking earlier if I was on Discord, and yeah, I'm going to be, link me, and I'm going to be giving you a review if you if you want one. <laughs> um, are you just another sunny girl? I no. think I'm just Julia Masalska. Yeah, yeah. So you can go. find her with this. Yeah, Julia so. Masalska. Let's do it. Aurelia is watching right now live and shared this day three final. This is my homecoming postcard using transform tools and smart objects. Also included some of the elements and techniques I used in the previous days, just for some coherence. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're ready, no rush. Finish up what you're yeah. doing. That's but, cool. Yeah, that's cool. This is Aurelia's postcard she designed. I love that the style is very cohesive. It's all. It looks like it's all belonging together. Mm -hmm. The typeface of welcome matches the M of home, and nice. uh, it kind of has a similar appeal to it. And also the colors are very subtle, which makes it belong to really belong together. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it turned out really good. I love the composition too. It kind of uh, all uh, works really well. Yeah, I totally agree. I actually, I'm curious, did you create all these? Like, did you make this illustration? Um, did you draw these letters? Did you use a typeface? Because I think it's done really well. It's super clean. Yeah. And I like your paper backdrop here. That's yeah. a nice little contextual, like textury element. That's awesome. Yeah. Lovely work. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thanks. We're going to add a little. Ba -ba. I'll give you Kathleen emoji. Okay. <laughs> so we'll move to the next one from mm -hmm. Ken. <laughs> Voodoo Val would love this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ken, this is awesome. You know, this looks a little like it was made in Dimension to me. Oh yeah, with, it does. Oh my gosh, there's this background that looks so similar to this wooden yeah. background. Is it? Wait. Ken, if you're in chat, let us know. This looks like it was done in Dimension. Yeah, which right? Which super cool. But I think this awesome. is so funny. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Do or not, there is no try. Do or do, do, or do not. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is no, can you do a Yoda voice? I don't know, I'm terrible at my Yoda <laughs> voice. We need um, Christine Arth to try it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's probably good at it. I think this is really nice though, and I think it's fun, and it shows that you're grasping and demonstrating some of the techniques that we wanted you to learn, so great job. Yay. Okay, Spenig. It's a World of Warcraft postcard with a nice mock-up. If you want to Yeah. Oh, if you want to live in paradise, simply look around and view it. I think it's a Willy Wonka quote. Oh, I love Willy Wonka. Yeah, me Willy too. Wonka, Willy Wonka. Oh, it's so nice. I used to, when I was a kid, I used to get called Augustus Gloop. <laughs> because my full name's Augustus. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, of course, a flattering nickname. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I think it's really nice. Yeah, I, I, love, feedback? I love the background that you, it li really looks like it's laying on the table. Yeah. It's really nice. I agree. Um, I love the color composition and um, how you also did not just fill the, the back of the card, but just put a little element mm -hmm. that kind of can stand for itself. So um, I think it's really well done. Yeah, I agree. I like the depth. I think it's fun. It really kind of pulls you in. Like the, you know, with World of Warcraft or games, it's like a 
MMO and you're kind of pulled into an alternate reality and that's kind of how the front feels to me, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah. So great job, thanks for sharing. Yeah, good job. Okay, let's do this one from Ceci or Cece. Lift your head up. Oh, I love corgis. Mm -hmm. I'm a corgi fan. I love dogs. <laughs> I love dogs in general. <laughs> yeah, me too. I have a dog. I love dogs. And Julia, you just got your, jo your dog pretty recently, right? <laughs> yeah, like two months ago. Nice. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. <laughs> little bundle of love. Yes. I also fluff. have a dog, so. Yeah, yours is also a little fluff. Yeah, fluffy <laughs> dogs are the best. Yeah. But I like this. I, I like the typeface. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun. It's playful. You know? It's really fun, yeah. And also, uh, you did a good job of cutting out the letters for the uh, for the dog's head mm -hmm. the, with the F. It looks good. Yeah, I agree. It really looks like it's resting on. Them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, Charlie's wondering in chat says, "I'm 15 years old. I would love to learn Illustrator and Photoshop. Any tips for learning online?" Yes, watch Adobe Live. Yeah, you found the right watch place. Watch Adobe Live every t every day, and mm. you will learn quickly. It's true. And we practice. We have just Adobe take, Live, and we have challenges for both of those programs. Exactly. And whenever whenever you watch something, just repeat what the person is doing. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to be quite you know, precise in the little steps that we're doing. So uh, you have the chance definitely to work with us at yeah. the same time. I agree. So try out Adobe Live. Adobe Live, you can learn from professionals, get inspired. And then we have a daily creative challenge for Illustrator and one for Photoshop. And you can check out both of those and sort of gather some more skills. Yeah. All right. So we'll do, we'll do two more if you're willing. Let's do it. So this is, was submitted by Leslie. Um, ah, and Leslie. Looks Good like job. there's been a couple versions of this. And this mm -hmm. looks like the most recent. Mm -hmm. um, let there be light. It looks very three-dimensional. It almost yeah. looks like it's inside the space, and the little corner of the space is cut out, and that's where the light is coming out, coming yeah. in. <laughs> I like it a lot. Yeah, it looks awesome. Love it. Okay. I love the, the typeface that you picked. It's very easy to read. Mm -hmm. And I like that you also um, did a color difference between the text and the word light. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of um, supported with the meaning of the, se of the sexual yeah, absolutely. photo picture. And like we learned yesterday, it passes the squint test, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can Definitely, read it from far away. For sure, yeah. There's a good contrast. I mean, yeah. black, red, and, and uh, white was always like one of the most used colors in movie posters, so or in any posters. Yeah. So um, it's definitely a very contrasty uh, combination. Yeah, super nice. Good job, Leslie. Thanks for sharing. And then this is our last one for today. It was submitted by Hattie. Let me, actually, let me make sure. I think we've got a couple that were shared since we've been live. So we'll keep going for a second. Okay. So this was done That's by good. Hattie. Hattie. Keep calm and carry on. Oh, I love that. That's like a classic t-shirt cool. slogan. Yeah. Should be on my t-shirt. Is that a tea? That looks uh, like tea. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Maybe like a hibiscus tea or something. Yeah. Yeah. Tea time. It's, nice. <laughs> it's cool. I yeah. like it. I like Free the typeface. It's the typical keep calm mm -hmm. and do something. Totally. Typeface, so I definitely can recall seeing it. Yeah, I agree. And the colors are nice. They kind of match the brand that we've been working on, too. Yeah, and I like bit. that they're a little bit, you know, that they're not too bright. Mm -hmm. yeah. It gives a good feeling. Good choices. It makes me calm. Yeah, I agree. West Coast Irad. Keep going. Keep going, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I like this a lot. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe what I would do is I would... Um, so that you have a good reading flow, because right now Larry is so easy to read. It's just jumping into your eyes. So mm -hmm. what I'm reading is keep Larry going. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, if you want, you can maybe switch the positions between going and Larry. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, you have a little bit more domination and in going instead of Larry. Cool. So there is a right um, hierarchy of information. I think that's a great tip. I really like these oranges. You're making me hungry. <laughs> yeah. That, that could be a cool picture for Instagram. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a Pinterest worthy. Or pin Pinterest worthy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I'm just going to scroll up and see where we're at with timing. Okay, cool. So we have only a couple more. Yay. Cool. Bridges, not walls. Dr. Martin Luther King. That's a great quote. And yeah, very yeah. important for these days. Mm-hmm. 
I agree. I really like it. Uh, and there must be some sort of, you know, blending modes or layers in here to make this typeface blend in with the texture of the background. Yeah, this texture is so interesting. Right? It almost looks uh, like when a fuel leaks on, on the wet floor mm -hmm. and you have these color, uh, you know, gradients flowing into each other. I it's agree. very interesting. I'd be curious to know how you made those those colors, like yeah. all blended together, how you made that texture. I also really like how Bridges is on the walls and the walls is on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of like plays with the perspective of what the words mean. So mm -hmm. I think it's really clever. Yeah, and it's easy to read because you read bridges first and then you go to the right side, not, and mm -hmm. then you go down to walls. Yeah. So it's the natural flow of reading. That's really nice and Very a good well message. Done. So thank you for sharing, Abraham. Yeah. Wordsmith hero. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Charlie, Charlie is asking, when uh, is the life every day? Yeah, it's almost every day. Monday through Friday, right? Monday through Friday. Yeah. We have daily creative challenges every day. Mm -hmm. We have Adobe Live segments like this, Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays, we have a bunch of spe special live streams from our evangelists. Mm -hmm. Jason Levine, Paul Tranny, um, hopefully Terry White, if we can get him signed up, and Howard Pinsky. And they do master classes for different products. Mm. So you can find live streams all week. Just pretty cool. Yay. Okay, so here we go. So these are the last three. This is just a classic 2020. I think this one's yeah. a stamp. This might have been the one from challenge number one. Oh, that's cool. But I like it a lot. Yeah, it looks like, like a an, spatter. It looks like a print. Mm -hmm. Like an unperfect print. Yeah, which I really it could love. be like a lithograph or something. Yeah. I think that's what they're called. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. Yeah. I like uh, that you pick the colors like that too. I mean, it's not all one color. This makes it interesting. Mm -hmm. And then we got from Ant today. Have a good day. Nice. You know, the day got lost for me. I didn't see it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was looking for it mm -hmm. because I knew that have a good yeah. and then there should be day somewhere. So, you know, those, uh, you know, those uh, pictures of uh, letters where you need to find words. Totally. <laughs> It kind of looks like that. Yeah, yeah, it creates sort of an illusion. Yeah. Um, but I think it's fun. It creates intrigue and it keeps your eye moving around the page. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah, Munir, welcome. Hello again. <laughs> Good to have you here. Cool. And this is actually our last one. Follow your dreams. Yeah. So it's similar actually to the color palette that we just saw a second ago. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Love it. Mm -hmm. I love that you played with a type here. You can see that not every you know, typefaces. It's the same typeface probably, but you kind of like stretched it out a little bit to make it more, um, to look, make it look more condensed, like as if you're looking for some, um, at something from the side. Yeah. So that really worked well. Yeah, I agree. I think it's nice. Awesome. Well, thanks for your feedback, Julia. And sure. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Continue working on these challenges. You can share them on Discord. Uh, we have mentors in there all the time. Julia's in Discord. I'm in Discord where we can provide feedback for you and help you get on your way to learning some new skills. So yeah. thanks for joining. If you're just learning about the challenge, I just want to show you really quickly where you can register. If you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, you just click on this blue button and you're registered. There's some easy steps here on how it works. And then the challenges are unlocked every day. So it's super easy. Tomorrow's challenge will be unlocked at 8 a.m. So make sure you register and join the Discord before then, and then you'll figure out what it is then. Yay. Cool. So you ready to try some animations? Yeah, I exported all the different the different perspectives. So if you look at it like that. Oh, so this nice. is actually the animation cool. that we're going to have, right? The only problem is that, oh, wait a second. Ah, look, there is a little mistake. First, it started turning into one direction, and then it started turning into the other direction. Oh, I see. OK, Wonder let's remove the can, first one. Yeah, we can probably play with that. OK, so now let's see if this works. Yeah, this works. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all of these in Photoshop. Boop, 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 boop. And now, since I have them all in Photoshop, it will be good to have them in JPEG format. So nice. I can just copy. But actually, I can just, um, yeah, maybe it will be good to export them 
real quick. Export is. It would be good if I had rendered them in PNG, so I wouldn't have to do anything with them. But now we're here, so. I'm just looking up your YouTube channel real quick. Yeah, sure. So I can show people how, how to find it at the end of the stream. Sure. And of course, I'll shamelessly plug mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> Do that. Okay, I'm good to go. Now my brain is back on. Okay, let's look at it. Oh yeah, you wanna check it out? Yeah. Okay, cool. So before we wrap up today, we have about 10 minutes left. Julie's gonna keep animating. We're gonna show you the finished work and we're gonna give you a recap of everything we worked on over the last two episodes. But I do want to encourage you to follow her on Behance. She's going to be posting a project on Behance that's gonna recap everything she worked on on the live stream, so you won't wanna miss that. Um, you can find it by going to this URL. You can also find it in the info tab above chat. Um, you follow her on Behance. You also can find her on Instagram at just another sunny girl. Mm -hmm. She posts some life updates, also some design work when she publishes projects, and also when she goes live to yeah. Adobe Live. Uh, yeah, in my stories, I sometimes I try to uh, post some of my process. So whenever I'm, I'm working on a design, I'm, I'm posting the process. So. Uh, it's always interesting to see yeah. how other people do it. <laughs> Check it out. And then last but not least, she makes YouTube videos. Yay. Oh, triple threat. Check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make one every month. I started in, in September. So um, I'm trying to make a, a video a month about like things that I've learned. And uh, it's mostly about freelance business. So make sure to join it. It's called the Maid Channel. Yes. And uh, there is more to come for sure. Yes. <laughs> And they're really nice. She's got an awesome home studio set up. And Aww. obviously, she's great at what she does. So you should check Aww. that out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You're welcome. And then last but not least, I make fishing videos. So Yay, if you want to watch me cool. go I fishing, wanna see. I wanna see you those. can check them out. I've got a bunch of them. And you just can subscribe. And you know, it's Tackle Boys, but it's not exclusive to boys. You know, like anyone can be a Tackle Boy. Yeah. <laughs> so feel free to check that out. So that's my, that's my social plug. Yay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I love that, you know, people people do have di different facets. You know, it's not just work. <laughs> We're not just designers. We're also other people, you know, <laughs> other things, We're not just designers. We're all people. We all have interests. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I would be interested to hear anyone watching in chat right now. Um, what are your interests that are that fall outside of what your career is? Exactly. So if you're a designer or whatever, like, what do you like to do that's actually unrelated, that you feel enriches your life? Yeah. Let us know. Yes. That would be interesting to me too. I love to go hiking. I love I to go too. hiking. I love to be in nature. I love to travel. I love to travel. Traveling is so much fun. Is that it's your favorite? Best. I you think have to rank them. Ranking, uh, I would say, yeah, traveling is the most. Uh, I like to learn new things. Come on, like uh, it can be traveling, it can be learning new tools, it can be learning dimension, <laughs> for yeah, example. Totally. It can be learning arrow, it can be learning fresco, any, any. Okay, but that has to do with design again, but it does, I mean, but learning things is Learning important. things, it's important, yeah. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you learn things through experiences like travel or hiking Correct. or whatever. I find like if I if I don't get out into the wild or experience nature in some sort, I start to feel uninspired. And I start to lose energy. Oh, and I feel like that's okay. my chance to recharge my batteries and I'm kind of like back one with the way things work out mm. in nature. And I think that inspires how, you know, basically everything works in our lives. So that's why I like it. Okay. So let's see this. Okay. I have my PNGs and my JPEGs here. Nice. Um, okay. While you're importing those, we've got Aurelia as a fashion designer. Tim likes making memes and music meme videos, which I can attest to. <laughs> Manuel is cycling and photography. Charlie likes whitewater kayaking. Hugo, oh, wow. archaeology and exploring. Warren is a gamer and streams on Twitch a lot. That is awesome. I'll check out your channel, Warren. Axel is a musician. Would love to hear your music. Ariana uh, likes to read and do puzzles. Munir is a swimmer. Um, Santaji likes old cars, DIY electronics, guitar, and bass. That's awesome. 
Binging on Netflix, says Frankie. Animating is Kroll. Cinema for Camila. So it goes to show you, right? Cool. Like, we have an interest that's brought us all together, which is graphic design, branding, and packaging, and creating logos. But we all have these like wide range of interests. Yeah, that is amazing. I'm really happy to hear that, actually. I'm always, I always feel bad when I, whenever I open Instagram and I see that people are posting work, 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 work. I always feel so lazy, but in reality, I just uh, have a life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't do that. It's unsustainable. You have to, you gotta diversify a little bit. And we've got our own Francisco Paco Siller, outdoor photography and videography. Oh yeah. And you should check out his videos. And I think he's planning on making more of some amazing like nature and photography and landscape time lapses and videos. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so we have our photos now in uh, Photoshop. And what we're cool. gonna do is window uh, timeline. We wanna create a timeline. And then we wanna put the layers in here. Create video timeline. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I wanted. Or did I maybe it did? So I'm not a pro at animation, but, okay. but we can try this. We can try this. So nice. here, basically, you have all the layers, mm -hmm. and it shows how long a layer will be will be played. Cool. Okay, this works. <laughs> yes. I'll get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically, I'm adjusting the time of how long a, one layer will be shown, mm -hmm. right? Let me... Oh, Paco with magic. Oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Paco. This is Magician. amazing. Okay, cool. So now, what we have is... Ta-da-da! Yay. So this is just the, time, the timeline tool in Photoshop, right? Exactly. Yeah. So what I can do right now is I can extend this timeline... Oh, wait a second. Uh, okay, so I can I can do I can actually extend this timeline if you have time right now I think we're a little bit short on time, but This is what you get and then you can play it back and then it goes back uh, So right. so it turns back and forth. So now what you do is to export this as it um, You can export it as a movie file or as a um, GIF, GIF? How do you call it? Yeah. <laughs> GIF file? Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato, yeah. Some people say GIF, some people say GIF. Some people have a really strong opinion. Yeah. So, okay, so, so now... So I would say GIF. GIF. Or and GIF. And then you can, you can export it as GIF. <laughs> and, uh, and click export, and then you have this little animation that you can use for social media or for your Behance project. Cool. Of you can just embed that right into a Behance project? Um, you can embed the, the uh, GIF or GIF yeah. uh, files into your Behance, and that's how I did it on the other one, if you mm -hmm. want to show it real quick. Yeah, totally. Let me get back to it real quick. Bam. Bam. Yeah. Bam. So if you, yeah, right there. So here, this is made with Dimension and Photoshop anim uh, animation tool, the timeline tool that I just uh, was just showing you. So here I did about 10 renderings adjusting the position of the uh, bo of the bottle and adjusting the light so i increased the light or i was uh, changing the position of the light nice. but you can play with different things you can even make your bottle walk through the through the uh, artboard ah, like a or something time like lapse. that yeah you can make a time lapse with that it, yeah. it is or actually stop motion i guess it is yeah, yeah stop motion yeah, yeah, yeah that's what what you will call it so it, it will make your presentation a little bit more exciting you know we are visual people and we like to see um, things uh, that have a little bit of motion yeah. and interact with our... I feel this adds such a nice element to your project, right? Yeah. Like and this is, a, this is made with Photoshop, exactly how I was just showing you right now. So cool. Yay. Awesome. So do you want to use the last two minutes to kind of do a recap and show everyone what we've worked on over the last sure. two days? Sure. Sure. Let's, I know it's let's not a look, lot of time, but... Let's look where we started. Yes. Uh, so we started with these amazing... Uh, if you if we switch to my screen, <laughs> oh yeah, um, um, and uh, oh. so this is how we started off. I remember this uh, yesterday, this amazing uh, Just like it was yesterday. <laughs> shape. Yeah, <laughs> so we started off like this. This was obviously nothing, and that's why I was I would like to encourage every one of you to keep on practicing and keep on working on on the stuff because this can be very discouraging. You'll be looking at this and thinking, wow, this will never be a, a, a brand. But then 
you have this little happy accident where you find a shape that kind of looks very appealing. Yep. And then this shape, you know, you, you, you keep on building it, right? So, so this shape is a now a brand. And I mean, obviously it's just one of the variations. If we had more time, if I had a couple more days, I would have a bunch of logo variations. Mm -hmm. Uh, with different concepts, uh, but here this concept uh, came out, uh, you know, uh, to be a, a very versatile solution that we can use for different media and for different, um, you know, for different lockups uh, in different um, situations. So, yeah, for example, this could be a stamp, this could be used on a website, this could be a sticker, um, this can be a lockup for, uh, I don't know, a business card. Right. So, and then, and then of course, yeah, the application that we did to the colors made, um, brought even more life to it. So, yeah. Cool. I just want to, uh, to encourage you guys, you know, to keep practicing and use the tools that you have because we have so many tools now on the online world and, you know, all the applications that we get. Um, it's just uh, so fun. Julia, thank you so much. Oh, thank you've been you guys an inspiration for to all of us, <laughs> and you've taught us like pro tips from creating logos to mocking them up, taking your own product shots. You've shown us how to use dimension. So I think that both of these live streams will be rewatched and cherished by many of our viewers. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks for everyone. Job. Thanks for everyone who was in the chat, and thank you guys. You did a great yeah. job. It was so amazing. Oh, it was so much fun. Thank so you so much. So we'll see you all soon. We're live again tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. So thanks for joining us, and until next time, thanks for watching Adobe Live. And we love all of you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Adobe Live. That was amazing. Yeah, so we did this. <laughs> Let's get, so look at this. This added highlight, which just pling. Wow. Painted this is the greatest reason to watch these streams. I have been using Illustrator for so long and have never used that. Experiment. Don't be afraid to mess up. I really like it. Could be more mm -hmm. deep as yeah. far as the cut so that you can see it. Ooh. Right?